an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame Well, hi there. Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. Uh, Alice and I and our brother Mark, who is here with us by video, we want to just greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and pray that we'll all be blessed by God's Word during this time. We did a study last week uh, I, I called The Word of the Cross, and, and hopefully you have seen that before you see this. But regardless, this is like this. This is the second part of that. But we're going to go from the word of the cross to the wood of the cross today, and we're going to look at the wood of the cross. But before we do that, I'm just going to pray and ask Father that you would bless our time together, Lord God. That you would use this time to bring us all closer to you, to reveal more of your Son, give us greater understanding of everything your Son Christ Jesus said and did. And Lord, that we would have a greater and greater desire to be more and more like him for your glory, for your name, for your glory. So just touch this time, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, like I said, this is the second part of this study on, on the word of the cross. But this time, as I said, it's going to be specifically about the wood of the cross. Yes. Okay. Uh, so let me just bring up and get ready to go here. I think I'm ready to go. Yep. I'll have to cut that out, won't I? Okay. You know, there's an old song that was sung during the charismatic movement back in the 70s, mid 70s. That, as a matter of fact, we sang a number of times. We had a, we had a little music group. And it was called uh, Behold the Wood, Behold the Wood of the Cross. It's really a touching song, very, very good. But I want to start with this. David, King David, a man after God's own heart, he was a shepherd serving his father faithfully, tending his father's flock, as we're seeing when Samuel went mm -hmm. to uh, anoint and came, where was he? He was out tending his father's right. flock. When the, the war erupted, and David's brothers had gone off to the Valley of Allah to fight with Samson and the army of the Philistines. Where was David? He was tending his father's flock. He was a faithful, doing his work faithfully. Because he was a faithful shepherd of his father's flock, mm -hmm. do you think it had anything to do with God the Father calling David to be tend shepherd the shepherd of his flock? Yes. Right? You know, another good example of that is uh, the Apostle Peter. Peter joined his father and his brother Andrew in the, in the family business, which was fishing, right? That was their occupation. He was surely faithful in that task. He was not given to doing things by hand. He wasn't, he wasn't a slouch. No, when, when he did something, he did it all the way. Yeah. So he was a fisherman, trained that way, until Jesus came along and made him a fisher of men. Do you not think that God is working in your life to prepare you for the calling that he has for your life? The answer to that should be yes. Remembering the fact that every Christian has a ministry. I mean, go read what it says in 1 Corinthians 12. You know, the Spirit of God works through each one individually as he will. So we all have a ministry. And God has prepared us for the ministry he has called us to. Okay. They were faithfully, when I'm talking about David and Peter, they were faithfully doing what they had been trained for to serve their family. But trained it for the family of God. And by the way, just a little side note. And fathers, you should particularly pay attention to this, but mothers too, and parents. Because it says in the Word of God, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Mm -hmm. So they were being trained up in the way they would go. And God had greater purpose than they recognized. Right? God may have greater purpose in your life than you recognize. So let me just talk about Jesus here. 
Because it says, I'm going to read from Mark, chapter 6, and I'm going to start in verse 2. When the Sabbath came, he, this is Jesus, mm -hmm. began to teach in the synagogue. And the many listeners were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what is this wisdom given to him in such miracles as these performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Jude, Joseph? And Judas and Simon are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. The carpenter. David was a shepherd. Peter was a fisherman. fisherman. Jesus was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to say, talk about the wood of the cross. You see, Jesus was trained by his earthly father, Joseph, mm -hmm. to follow in his profession as a carpenter, to build things and repair things. And by the way, that was very typical in the Jewish culture. It still is in much of the Jewish culture. That you go into the family business. Right. And your father trains you up in the way you should go. Both in the spiritual and in the natural things. So Jesus came into the world both to build, to build his church. He said, I will build my church. And to repair his church. Uh, to repair us with the father. Do me a favor, in mentally, put a hyphen in between the re and the pair. Yes. You see, mankind started out aired with the Father in the garden, mm -hmm. all right? We're supposed to be joined together with the Father. But you see, because of the sin in the garden, here's what God spoke to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Sin separates you from God. Where we were supposed to be paired together with God, all of a sudden, two, we're far apart because of our sin. Mankind needed to be repaired. Have anything Bluetooth? <laughs> you know, it has to be paired together with something, right? We need to be repaired. Jesus had been trained to work with wood. Yes. With a hammer, with nails. Hmm. And I just thought of another. When you said before that we were joined together with the Father in the garden, that's another term in carpentry. Is the joiners? Joiners. Yes, that, that's who you're right. It's amazing things you know. Okay. So he would because he would use hammer and nails and wood. He would accomplish his father's work faithfully with that wood, hammer, and nails. Mm -hmm. The cross. <clears throat> That's why I said, you know, we, like I said, we talked about last week the word, the word of the cross. But what we're going to look at is the wood of the cross. Our participation in the fix or the repair is just to choose to receive it, to accept it, to be the whosoever will that Jesus spoke of in John 3.16, right? Whosoever will. We just said, we're the object of the work. Okay? So it's not about the work we do. It's about the work he does in us, through us. We're the object of his work. Not to do the work. Remember, we talked about last week, the word of the cross, the final word. It is finished. It's done. It's finished. John 17, verse 21, says this. Talking about, this is Jesus in the garden, praying. Praying to the extent with such zeal that he, he literally bled from praying so hard. And he's talking to the Father, he says, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. As we say in John 17, 21. We have to be joined together, joined with God, through the work of Jesus Christ and join with one another. All right? That's the proper fitting. So now let's just look for a moment at the, at the cross as a metaphor. You understand what a metaphor is? It's, you know, you look at something and it, it reveals other things, right? The wood upon <clears throat> which Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins has significance when we look at the symbolism of the cross. Okay? A cross is made of two pieces of wood, right? There is the upright piece that's 
put in the ground, and then there is the cross piece that is attached to that at some point there. It's gotta be firmly planted, right? It said in Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. You've got to be firmly planted. That upright piece has to be firmly planted. Otherwise, you know what? The Romans are good at that. Sad to say. You don't want the cross falling over, flopping, right? So, that up that upright piece represents our relationship with God, with God in heaven, right? It starts here on the ground, that's us. And it is it heads upwards. How far upwards does it go? Straight to the throne of God and following Jesus Christ. But the other, the cross piece, is supported by its attachment to the vertical piece. I, I'd like to put a drawing here, I don't know if I can, but you, you have to get that picture in your mind, right? The upright piece of wood planted firmly in the ground represents us here and God there. The cross piece, which is attached to that, represents my relationship with other men. That's a man in the right. All right. All right. Okay. You got that? So it, it's about the Lord and us with him high and lifted up and us still here on the ground. That's, that is that main piece. Right. The horizontal portion represents man rela man's relationship with other people. But what happens if that vertical piece is removed? It's not supporting the vertical If it's not horizontal. supporting the horizontal, the horizontal one just drops down into the dirt. They're no longer joined. No, but if they're not joined, if, if, that, ver if that horizontal piece, mm -hmm. which is man and man, is not connected to that relationship between us and God, it's going to drop into the dirt of the ground. Mm -hmm. Right? It's that simple. It's like falling away. Every relationship that we have with other people, if it is not supported by our connection to the Lord above, will fall. How simple can that be? That's the metaphor of the cross. Can you not see that in the world that we live in today? I mean, everywhere you look in the world, uh, everywhere you look in the world, not just here in the United States, not just in Britain, but in every country around the world, what you see is a breakdown of society. You see, I mean, just, it's, it's like anarchy in the streets. You see the bitterness between this person and that person. <clears throat> because it's not supported by the truth. It's not supported by a relationship with God the Father. Through, and the only way it can be is through the atoning work of Jesus Christ on that cross. That's the word of the cross. They're not using the standard. So I think, so any relationship, when I say any relationship, I'm talking about husband and wife. If that relationship is not fixed on a relationship with God and man, that relationship is going to fail. Now, our marriage is failing today. Big time. It's incredible. You know why? Because it lacks that foundation, the firm foundation of the relationship with God. Mm. How about parents and children? It's the same thing. There's no human relationship that can stand without being connected to the Lord. I mean, that's what the, that's what the wood of the cross proclaims to us. I mean, we talked a lot last week about what the word of the cross proclaims, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Good news. But you have to be able to hear you have to be able to see things and appraise things spiritually. That's what it says in Hebrews 5.14. You know, the solid food of the word is for the mature, who because of practice has his senses trained to discern between good and evil. I mean, when you look at the cross, what do you see? Do you see the horror of the cross? Or do you see the glory of God? Do you see the horrible, awful, terribleness of the cross? Or do you see the love of God? Because it is that cross that displays the glory of God yeah. and the love of God. Yeah. How do you discern? How, do you, how have you trained yourself to see these things? If you don't have a right connection with God, you're not going to see that. 
And that's true of all of the situations going on in our life. You know, there are a lot of bad things happening in a natural right now. There's no right. doubt about it. And I mean, I don't see peace anywhere except in the face of God. It says, talking of Jesus, it says, he himself is our peace. He made peace for us on that cross, on the wood of the cross. Because he made peace between us and God the Father. Without that peace, you'll have no peace. That's the truth. We have to learn and train ourselves to behold the word. We have to remember that without a right relationship with God, you will not have a right relationship. You'll not have a right relationship in your marriage, in your family, at your work, with, with nobody. How do you get that fixed? You allow Jesus Christ to repair you, repair you with the Father. It's got to be. You have to understand this. You can do anything you want. You can, you know, I mean, you can go to church as often as you want. You can go to the seminary if you want. But if you don't have a right relationship with God the Father through the atoning work of Jesus on that cross, nothing will go right in your life. Period. It'll fail, it'll flop, it'll fall to the ground, it'll fall into the dirt, the muck and mire of this earth. Because there's no support. Because there's no support. And everywhere I look today, now, you know, Alice and I have done a lot of traveling, and I, I watch probably more international. I'm not a news buff. I, I used to say, up until recently, I used to say, I only check the news in the morning just to see if the war started. Well, it did. <laughs> so now, I mean, I, I, I just, I'm interested to see what's happening spiritually in the world. And I, I, I am more likely to watch the news from Germany. Japan, <laughs> Germany, because they have a better world picture of the news. But uh, it's not going well. It is not going well. I mean, not long ago, I mean, as we do this right now, not long ago, people were telling everybody, you know, it's all over. It's all, it's, it's good. It's a done deal. It's going by. And now all of a sudden there's a resurgence everywhere you look. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have a right relationship with God the Father, you're going to die. You're going to die that, that eternal death. There's no way to fix that. You can't fix it. You can only accept what God did through his son Jesus Christ to repair you, to fix you. Have you done that? He gave us eternal life. It's a free the, the free gift of life. You don't have to earn it. That's what it's, we talked about. It's finished. The point is, we need to have eyes that says that are fixed on Jesus Christ. That's what it says in Hebrews, right? Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith, the perfecter of your faith. Where do you look? Where do you see him? Yes, he, I mean, you can see him in his glory. But even if you see him in his glory, you'll see him in the ultra scarred hands. That, those are the receipt. That's the receipt. Yeah. Well, no, that's, a, that's a good point because it says, you know, that I uh, purchased with a price. We were purchased with a price. When you purchase something, you usually get a receipt for it. Mm -hmm. Where's the receipt? Well, it was written. Every time that hammer struck a nail in that wood, and the palm of his hand. Purchased one Alice. Purchased one Mark. Purchased one me. That's a receipt. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't do politics, by the way. I mean, you can like that or not. But I just say people ask me, "What do you, you know? What do you think about this and that politics?" I say, "I don't swim. I just don't choose not to swim in that cesspool." My citizenship is in heaven, from which I eagerly await a savior. So. The fact is that I, I just want to be an ambassador for Christ and make people aware of the fact that there is an answer. Yes. You know, the answer is not Donald Trump or Joe Biden or Boris or Angela Putin. Merkel or Putin. Or The answer is Jesus Christ. That's right. The only answer is Jesus Christ. That's the free gift of God putting him on that cross. He himself is our peace. No Jesus, no peace. You now you hear people say, no justice, no peace. You know, the simple fact of the matter is, if there's no Jesus, I promise you, there's not going to be any justice. That's right. I, I, I don't want to get political here, but I do want to say this, because I, I wrote a little article on our blog not long ago, because we are, and I know this is a movement that's going around the world, Black Lives Matter. 
Uh, of course they do. Black lives matter. Of course they do. Wait, my life matters. Your life matters. Whether it's yellow, brown, white, or whatever. All other, lives All matter. lives matter. But the question is not, do lives matter? The question is, why do they matter? Has anybody asked that question? Why do lives matter? Because of that cross. Because Jesus Christ was sent to that cross by the Father to redeem each and every life. To make it available. To make life available. How costly is that? How, how costly? What a gift. Has there ever been a more costly gift than Christ on the cross? And it is the free gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. So we have, we have to appraise all things spiritually. We need to look at the situation going on around us. And we need to be there bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. I walk through the world, I see a fixation on fake news and real. That's not what matters. What matters is good news or bad news. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, at the end of the day, there's only one place for good news. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's the good news of God the Father giving his, his son so that we might have eternal life. Are you listening to the good news? Are you? Honestly. I mean, stop and think about it. Do you spend a lot of time reading that news? Or do you spend time reading the good news? Jeremiah the prophet, he lived in a very, very tough time. He lived in a time when there were horrible things happening in the midst of the people of God in Israel. And it was the work of God. It was God bringing judgment on his people. But God bringing judgment on his people to heal them, to restore them, to get them once again to listen to his sweet voice. You know, in the midst of all of that, they called Jeremiah the weeping prophet. But Jeremiah said, thy word was found and I ate it. It became for me the joy and the delight of my heart. Get into God's word and you will find joy. That's right. Absolutely. John the Baptist said that his joy was made full because he heard the voice of the bridegroom. If you hear the voice of God, I promise you, you will have joy. Because that is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. You need to have that joy. Let me just help me out here. What's the fruit of the Holy Spirit? The love. The joy. The peace, the patience, or love, long suffering, as they say. Mm -hmm. The kindness. The absolute kindness. Goodness, goodness. gentleness, faithfulness, and self control. Do you see a lot of that around you? That's where you'll find it. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But you can't have the fruit of the Holy Spirit without a right relationship with God the Father. And you can't have a right relationship with God the Father unless it comes through the atoning work of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. on the word of the cross. The word of the cross. How do you see that? Like I said, have you learned to discern and not call evil good and good evil as Isaiah prophesied? I'm telling you, this is a time that we should be rejoicing. We should be lifting up our eyes for our salvation is drawing near. And we should be sharing the joy that we have. If you don't have the joy, please spend time in the word. And hear the truth of God. It'll stir it up and it'll you know, stir it up. Absolutely. Yeah. All the, the good news that's in that word. Yes. Good news. Yes. Absolutely. And good news will bring joy, it'll bring absolutely. peace, it'll bring satisfaction, it'll bring all the things that you need. It'll bring eternal life, and that's what you need. Well, I, that's all. I, actually, that's all I wanted to say. This is just a tag on the end of our last one. But I said it's a, it's a matter of understanding then you can't separate the word of the cross from the word of the cross. And the word of the cross is not, it, well, it may look like a horrific thing. I mean, it, it's so horrible, you can't even conceive of it. I know there was a movie made of it recently. Passion. I, I didn't want to see it because uh, it's just, it's too horrible. And yet at the same time, it's too wonderful. Because that is the free gift of God. And that's what your salvation that's what my salvation cost. Mm. That's the price that was paid. Thank you, Jesus. So I praise all things spiritually. Get in the word of God. Hear from, hear from the Lord. Let him speak to you. Because I promise you, his words will comfort you. Yeah. His words will transform you. 
His words will give you eternal life. His words will heal us. His words are healing. That's what it yes. says in Proverbs. His word is healing to the whole body. They can't find a cure for COVID-19. I'll tell you what the cure is. The cure is God's word. It's always been God's word. So I just want I want you to know that, that we love you and we do this because God has told us to do this. So we praise God and thank Him for this opportunity to spend time with you and to, to join together in the Word, to be paired together. We have a connection between us, between you and I, between Alice and I and you and I, between Mark and you. We have a connection. When we are part of the family of God, a connection that can't be broken. The devil can do all he wants. Jesus Christ came to do his work. His work was to build his church. Hallelujah. His work was to bring salvation and atonement for us. And it just reminded me of another song, Bind Us Together With Love. Bind Us Together With Love. That's what was on the cross. That was love. It says, we know love by this. While we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. That horrible, horrible death and that horrible, horrible place that became the wonder of the world. So, be with us again. Next week we'll start a new series. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet, but we will. And we thank you for being with us. We thank you for your prayers. And if you have prayer needs, write to us at office at BibleTalk.com. We want to be part of each other's lives. It's not for nothing that Jesus Christ died on that cross, shed his blood to make us one. Father, we just praise you and thank you that Jesus did for us what we could never do for ourselves. That he would make us right with you, God. That his sacrifice, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, his sacrifice took away our sin to make us right with you. So we are no longer separated from you. We don't have to be separated from you, Lord but we can be one with you and one with each other. So we praise you and thank you for that in Jesus' name, Father. Well, God bless you and goodbye till next time. And remember, Jesus loves you. A lot. Hallelujah. Bye-bye. God's love About the heavens God's love Deeper than the sea He's love Higher than the mountains God's love Always watching